morning, everybody. Mr. Stewart here, and welcome to a screencast on a newer topic, and it's a topic that involves a different way of counting objects, and it will link to our probability, too. Uh, they're called permutations, so your goals are to develop an understanding of what that means, and then we'll break into doing some solving of expressions that involve factorials. So that came out with our activity 4 4 at the start of the year, and then you'll solve different representations of a permutation, okay? Uh, or rather, you'll see representations of a permutation involving, here's a typo, uh, factorials, okay? So let's get into this here. Uh, what this means here in the top left-hand corner is um, the P, in this instance, instead of probability, is going to represent permutation, okay? So permutation, which simply means an arrangement of objects. So the first number, this three here, okay, that's going to correspond to how many objects I have here. So I have three different colored tiles, okay? The second value is going to specify the number of items I want to select when making my arrangements. So for instance, I'm going to, of all three, I'm going to use all three tiles. So I'd like for you to think about how many different arrangements of three items here can I make if I'm selecting all three? Okay, so different arrangements. Well, working our way through here, I'll just do a quick modeling. So here's one possibility. Here's possibility number two if we flip the yellow and the orange tiles. Possibility three, as you've probably identified, would and four both begin with the yellow tile, and then it's the green and orange which will alternate. And then last but not least, the final one would be with using orange tiles, the fifth and the sixth possible arrangements. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that half of these arrangements, uh, if you were to look at them backwards, would simply be the same as another arrangement, okay? But what's important here is the order. So it's the wrong color. The order in which you arrange the tiles is important, okay? So that's the case with permutations. So six different arrangements of three tiles using all three. On the other hand, as mentioned earlier, the second value is how many you select when making your arrangements. So here I'm looking for two tiled arrangements if you're given three. So the number of those, if you pause the video and take time to think that through, It's the same thing happens here. The order is important, that which comes first and that which comes second, okay? So a green-yellow is different than a yellow-green when we are concerned about the order in which the tiles are presented. So in this case, you can see there will be another six permutations of three objects when selecting only two of them. Okay, so here are the six arrangements. So in essence, that's really all a permutation is. Okay, so when you're contemplating a number of objects that are given to you and the order in which they are arranged, much like they're filling a position in a lineup, okay, uh, that is how many particular arrangements can you imagine? Okay. So much like anything else in mathematics, right? Things are represented in a variety of ways. And permutations were just represented in terms of a pictorial representation. So uh, all of these notes, these are all pinned to the course website, so you can download them from there as well. So the first column, in summary, so the number of permutations of three objects using three items you could also show them in a letter format or a numerical format. 
so you can see all of the different representations there. Here are the different permutations involving two objects. And then the last view, this one here, if you're only selecting one, there are about only three permutations. And last but not least, if you don't choose any objects in your arrangement, what we're saying is that it is the null set or the empty set. Okay, so there are no objects that are being selected, uh, any objects to arrange. But strangely enough, what we can do is we can say that there is one way to select nothing. Okay, so there are no items within that set. It is the null set, but there are exactly or there is exactly one way, and that is to select nothing, okay? Uh, permutations can also be thought of as the following. Okay, so this should fade out by clicking in a certain region, and there it is, good, okay. You can also think of permutations as kind of filling up of boxes okay, or uh, placement of objects into positions. So according to the chart, you can see here that for three objects and selecting three, any three could occupy the first position, okay? Then once you've filled the first position, you only have two remaining to fill that one. Once you select the second position, there's only one item that remains to be chosen. Okay. And you can see that here. Go back to our visual. If you select green first, right, you're only left with two options. And in that second position, it could have been either yellow or orange, as you can see here. And then the final position, you're left with only orange or yellow. So that's the significance or the meaning of filling positions. Same thing applies here, that if you're only selecting two objects, any three can go to the first, and you're only left with two for the second. Okay. This one here, there are three objects to which you fill the first position, and according to the zeroth position, this is the empty set. Okay. And what we're going to see, there's just a little definition for you, or some symbols, that represents in general a permutation. So n is the number of items that you have, and r is the number of positions that you can fill. Below, you'll see a multiplication statement. So the number of permutations is the product of these particular factors here. Okay, so 3, 2, and 1. You'll see here, product of 3 and 2, also gives the arrangements there, which is six. Okay. You might also notice the following, is that this representation here, because we're multiplying the first three natural numbers, we can use the definition of a factorial to abbreviate or to make it easier to represent the number of permutations. All right, well, that's going to move us forward. Seeing that I've no, uh, introduced the notion of factorial, that will come up eventually within our work. So as far as the course website's concerned and your notes, here's a little bit of background for you. Okay, so the words that are highlighted here, I'm just going to quickly go over those. And uh, we're really starting to study a field of math, which is known as combinatorics, okay, which is concerned with the counting of possible outcomes. Okay. Our first topic is permutations, and that will be followed by one called combinations. Perm uh, permutations uh, are arrangements of objects, or a finite, that is a definite number of elements, but the importance is that they are ordered. Okay, The order does matter, whereas with combinations, which we'll see later on, they do not matter. Okay. Here's a few notations that will be used and that you can use too. Different texts, different websites have different ways of representing things. So here's one 
common method. Okay, and I will probably try to use this one here a little bit more often for the simple reason that this looks like the probability statement and it will also mirror or look like um, a notation we can use when we're working with the combinations. Okay. So I mentioned the notion of factorials. I'm just checking our time here. Let's see if we can't split this into two different videos. So let's wrap this one up uh, with some notation. Okay. So having mentioned the word factorial, uh, factorials are used in representing permutations. Okay. So there's a formula for this, and we're just going to kind of break it down using a numerical example. Okay. And we'll use some patterning. So for the zeroth position, or if there are zero items available to arrange, uh, what we would do is we would consider all possible arrangements as if we were selecting all three, and that's three factorial, or six, as you can see here. Because there's one way to represent that, okay? Because there's only one way to represent three objects and not choosing any we know that the value of the numerator here has to be divided by itself or six. That is what is going to tell us what we need to divide our numerator by, okay, which is three factorial. Working that backwards, okay, the notation for our denominator will be three minus zero, okay, and a lot more of that explanation soon to come with additional examples. Now, if we're working with one item being selected, we know that there are six in total, okay? And we know through that experiment or that uh, physical placing of the tiles that there had to be three possible arrangements. So in order to produce that three, we need to divide six by two, which you can see here, bringing that back into a factorial notation 2 times 1 is 2 factorial. And if you're going to use the values given to you, okay, if you use the values that are given to you, if we back that up, the only way to produce 2 factorial is to subtract 1 from 3. Okay, same thing over here. The only way to produce 3 factorial from the values that are given would be to subtract 0 from 3. So let's apply the pattern once more, in fact, twice more. Here you can see when we arranged two objects, we discovered that there were six two-tiled arrangements. And again, in order to produce that six, we would have to divide by one. Okay. So backing that up, using factorial notation, one is no more than one factorial. You can see that the numerator is still all possible arrangements are three factorial. And to produce one factorial using the values given to you, three minus two. And last but not least, when selecting all three items, we know there were six. Okay, in this case, we could divide six by one, okay? That would do it, wouldn't it? But if we're gonna use the values given to us and follow the patterning, okay? if we follow the patterning we have seen starting here, working our way over, we have to have a definition for three minus three factorial, otherwise called zero factorial. Okay, so there is a proof to that. Um, I would ask that you do follow it. It's not up to you to prove it, but just to follow that. Okay. So the definition of zero factorial is as follows. Okay. So if I have n objects to arrange, I could put the nth object in the first position, and then I would have one less than all the objects to place in all of the remaining positions. Okay. If I divide both sides by n, okay, 
if I do that, you can imagine that this n would cancel, and then I would have an n in the denominator. Okay, so let's see here. So that's what happens. Okay. Now, notice what happens. If I were to put a 1 in for n here, right, I'd have 1 factorial divided by 1 equals 1 minus 1 factorial, which is 0 factorial. If we simplify the 1 factorial over 1, here's what happens. We end up getting 1 as an answer on the left side. That is 1 divided by 1. So by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. And this is why, when we go back here, we can extend the patterning in terms of how to represent factorially this particular permutation of three items and selecting three. Okay. So that pretty much ends this first video. Okay, the second one's going to hold a couple of examples for you. But in general, when you are given n values to arrange and you are selecting r of them, okay, and r in this case could be less than or equal to n. Okay. So you can either select a number of items less than n or you could select a number that is exactly equal to. These are just a few background notes for you before we take off here from the video. Okay, just with respect to factorials in case you need a bit of a refresher or a reminder as to their significance.